Right. So one question regarding this is, uh, so yeah, I know it's a bit confusing. Uh, so that's what I would like to improve on that. But also uh, there could be cases where the error message could either be a simple error message to show on a label, or it could be an error message which I need to show in a pop-up or in an alert. So if that case comes in the future, again, I would have to do something in the view controller. I mean, of course, we would have to do, but yeah, the business logic keeps increasing here. Yeah, you would so have to check I... like, if the message is a specific message, you will show it in a alert controller, or you would yeah. put it on the header here on the top or in the middle of the screen and so right. on. Yes. And then it, this logic can start growing in the view controller. And since you don't yeah. have tests for the view controller, there's a lot of mm. risk that there will be a bug in there. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm scared about. <laughs> yeah. So if you move this logic to the view model, it's easier to test this logic. And you still need to write some unit tests through the view controller to make sure that when there's an update in the view model state, the view controller is reacting accordingly and updating the table view or it's showing an error message. And this should be simple tests like, oh, change the view model state, call a method in the view controller, the callback method, and assert mm -hmm. that the view controller has an error message or it has three cells and the cells are in the right place, for example, with the right, right data. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't need to test the frames. You don't need to test that <laughs> something was animated, but you need to test that the mm -hmm. data in the UI is correct. Based, it shows, it reflects the state of the view model in the UI. And those should be very yeah. simple, very fast tests. You don't need, even need to run UI tests. It can be, actually, you instantiate a view controller, you set the view model state to a specific state, and you check if the view model is rendering itself, right? The view is rendering itself according to that state in the view model. Those should be very fast, very easy to create tests right. as well and gives you more confidence. Mm -hmm. But all this logic ideally should be moved to the view model. For example, let's have a look at here. Let's say you have an error message state. This state may change. Mm -hmm. right? In MVVM, one of the patterns that are very common with MVVM is to have observable state. As you mentioned, you could use Combine or XSwift, but you don't want to use these frameworks. Absolutely fine. What you could do instead is just use a closure. For example, if you have a state of a message text, you can have a, uh, let's say, message changed callback. Mm -hmm. It be simply string to void. Well, it's an optional string, right? Because you may have a message or not. So we can say something like this. Message right. change. Yeah. Right. A call back in here. So let's make this optional for now. So we don't need this at constructor at in an initialization time. Yeah. Okay. Right. So now the view model can decide when to tell a message or not. Instead of just, cha just changing its state, yeah. It can notify any listeners, anyone that's set up as a listener about this change. For example, we can say like did set here. You call this message changed with the new value message text. Every time the message text changed, you will notify any listener that is listening to this. Right. Right, so in the view controller, probably like in, as soon as you create the, the view controller, you have like set up bindings, for example. Bindings. Mm -hmm. Private function set up bindings. And here you can get your view model, dot message changed. And now you get a new message. And do something like if new message or you just update the ui what is it message label yeah uh okay. i just uh, i just new message. yeah right makes sense yep um, yeah actually this is uh yeah this is really uh neat now you set this but, binding once when you create the view controller when the view is loaded 
And that's it. If there's any change to the state, the, you will, the UI will be automatically updated. Right. Right. And the view controller doesn't need to know when it changes. It just needs to know that if it changes, I will update the UI. Oh, they are, you know, that's it. They may change for many reasons. Many, many reasons might show a message here. Now, the view controller is decoupled of the reasons why a message might be shown and right. how and when. It just know that if this message was changed, the UI will be updated immediately. Mm. And you write a unit test for that as well. Every time the view model sends a message changed event, mm -hmm. the UI is updated. Right. And you can provide all this kind of uh, observable state for all the properties here. You could have a list players changed uh, yeah. event, top three players changed event. Mm. Error message, for example, if we have a specific error message, you mentioned you can have more than one yeah. error message. You have an error state changed and you pass like a, a string as well. Now, since you have two different kinds of message, here's just a general message that maybe is not an error and you, you show this in a pop-up or the error state you show in a pop-up. Mm -hmm. Now, the UI yeah. can decide like these are two different streams. If hmm. I receive a message from this stream, I'm going to show an alert controller. If I receive yep. from this stream here, I will show it, I don't know, in the drop down somewhere. Like yeah, on the yeah. header or the table yeah. view, something like that. Right, right. Or in the bottom here hmm. and so on. Another way about errors is use an enum to say types of errors in here. It was either a critical error that requires user attention or it was like just a I don't know, warning, warning. <laughs> you yeah. know, the, depending on the, the severity of the error, if it needs user attention or not, mm -hmm. you decide if you will actually lock their screen with an alert controller or if because you need a, they need to decide either retry or cancel, for example, or it's just a general message saying, hey, something went wrong here. So yeah. you can create an enum with types of errors, right? Like error, conforms to Swift error. Then you can have different types of error and you can have a stream that sends errors. Then the view controller will decide depending on the error, if it can be retried, I will show an alert controller mm -hmm. with a retry button oh. and so on. This requires attention or <laughs> you can even pass a retry closure here. The UI doesn't even know, needs to know how to retry. You yeah. just need to pass the retry forward to the alert controller. Yeah. Right. This is how you can deal with yeah. error. But the idea is that all this logic of changing the state should be in the view mode and the view controller should be as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Just listen right. to those changes, yeah. right? That's the, the key in the MVVM approach is that the, as you can see, the view model doesn't reference the view directly. It doesn't know about the view. It just say, just manages the state. If there's a state change, you will notify any listeners. Now, those listeners may not even be a view. Maybe it's a logger. <laughs> Maybe it's something else. Maybe yeah. it's like a unit test, right? Because in MVVM, you don't want the view model depending on the view. Mm -hmm. The opposite. The view model does not depend on the view. The view depends on the view model. It listens to it. The view model doesn't depend on the view. It just propagates state changes through any kind of observation pattern you are using. Rx Swift, combined right. closures, yeah. and so on. Right. Yeah, I think this you is a bit... Uh, sorry, Mike, you were saying? Yeah, and I, I want to say that uh, you don't have to have like an enum uh, per se. Like maybe you have two types of errors, you know, three types of errors. You could have different closures as well. You know, it's like, it doesn't have to be one type there. You can just expose hmm. another closure, right? Yeah, like a network so, error <laughs> stage change. Yeah, so now the UI doesn't have to switch, by the way, right? It just, you know, implements the new um, behavior. 
listens for the new behavior and implements. Yeah. Hmm. You have a network error, an user error, state change, and so on. And depending on what changed, maybe the UI will do yeah. something else. Right, right. Yeah, so I was saying that, uh, yeah, uh, I was not able to use Combine because uh, this uh, the project I'm working on still supports iOS 9. So, uh, yeah. but this is, yeah, definitely still the same. Uh, we are still observing it in some way. We have a closure. So, yeah, I think it's, thanks, uh, good good idea. Thanks for this. They're all callbacks at the end of the day, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you don't cannot use Combine, that's fine as well. We can yeah. use simple closures. And sometimes you don't even want to use Combine. It's good mm -hmm. to have an alternative, a lighter weight alternative. Absolutely. Yeah. 